Welcome back to the channel. Today we will be building the rustic wood cross decor, the wall decor that I saw, you probably saw, everybody probably saw on Matthew Peach's channel. And he doesn't have any plans. And so in the description, if you want some plans to build it, it's there. If not, you can watch the video. You can make the dimensions, any dimensions you want as long as you just center that cross. And so it'll work, but we're gonna get started and hopefully you like it. And I would appreciate a like and subscribe and hit that bell notification because we are building a woodworking business from start to finish on this channel. And so if you hadn't watched the previous episodes, watch them now. And if you're wanting to start a woodworking business or grow yours, you can follow along as I build mine. All right, to make this cross wall art, we're going to use one cedar picket. You take and set it, rip it, which will leave the two different size pieces or widths that we will use. Step two will be cut the two inch side of the rip into the pieces If you get the plans, it will have the dimensions of what to cut. If not, you can pretty much figure it out. I did, you know, if I can do it, you can do it. So we'll just take and cut these pieces and make them all as close to the same as you can, but it's rustic and so it doesn't have to be exact which is always good because it doesn't matter if they're perfect or not it's going to go together just fine this is the three inch side or the three inch width and i'm cutting those next as you see it's pretty straightforward there's no angles there's no difficult bevels or anything to do it's just straight chops set them chop them get together we'll be good on this first one i'm making here i did not um plain or sand i'm making it as rustic as possible there will be some light sanding later on just to make it not you know extremely rough but there was no pre-sanding at all. So once you get these cut, we will go to the next step. Aligning the pieces is pretty, it looks more difficult than what it is because you will, you know, if you have the plans, that give some instructions on how to do it. But basically, you're setting them up. You use two sets of the three inch, three and a half inches, as it's showing, and you leave. You pretty much center it, leaving a two inch gap in the middle. Then you use a two incher row for the wide part of the cross. Then you go back to a three and a half inch, and again, you're just lining them up down the center with the two inch holes or the two inch gap in the center and then you place the bottom board as you see that's not exactly right so it takes a little bit to get them finagled right and it just depends on the width or the dimensions that you're using of how big you make everything and where they all sit but you just center the cross in the center of the whole project it's not extremely important to get it exact because again this is rustic but it's best to have it you know as close as possible to completely centered in the center and 
keep that two inch gap all the way down. It's also important to realize that you're going to be taking this back apart. And so when you get it finally set, I'm going to show you a trick where you don't have to do this over and over and over again. What you'll you'll get it set up and you will draw some lines. Also, it's make sure to mention that you're doing this upside down. Put your favorite part or the prettiest part down, the prettiest side of the lumber down because you're going to ride on this back side and that will um, help you realign them whenever you take it back apart here shortly. So be sure and put them face down whenever you're doing this so you don't have to get the lines off as you draw these lines. So now it's pretty much complete and we will take and fix it with this line here for the glue up. All you have to do is put a scrap piece down and draw a line all the way down it where it hits every piece. You'll also use this line if you decide to use method two, it not just of assembly as I'll show you here shortly you'll use this line also. So it comes in handy in two different ways. So now you can take and move all the pieces and all you have to do is line those lines back up to put, them, put it back together. And you don't have to do all the measuring and all the moving. You just have to take and line the lines. So I'm flipping them all up and we'll do this to put the glue on and The glue up is best with those Yeah, the glue up is best with those clamps and You take and add your glue Normally I'll take and use my finger and spread that glue out Which gives it a nice even coat along it you don't have to take a lot of means it's gonna just put enough glue on don't put too much glue put enough glue on that it will squeeze out slightly whenever you clamp it together if you don't have clamps they're cheap at Harbor Freight but if you just don't want to buy any clamps go ahead and just use you, big rubber bands work good um, or you can just press it together the best you can but the as you see when I put it back together all I had to do was line those lines back up which put it right back to where it was to begin with so as I take this I put this temporary you don't have to do this but I use a temporary board on here to keep it from bowing up because as you put pressure on the clamp it's going to make the inner part of the boards along the cross try to bow up into a, you know, a, a C shape. So if you put that on there, it helps it. Don't put too much tension, just enough to squeeze the glue out a little bit, and that's it. If you put too much glue, as you see here, I messed up and I glued it, and I screwed it down. And so I have to take and unscrew that one little middle screw. But you flip it over and take and wipe the glue off, straighten any boards that you have, and you, then you need to let this sit for a while. I'm talking about an hour, maybe two, and that will keep it from, keep it from um, coming apart. Make sure that glue's dry. Okay, with these lines, this is the second one I built, but I put this, it's the same process. You put, put them together, put the lines on, and now I'm going to take and put pocket holes in the pieces. This way I'll be able, be, be able to screw them together. And just make sure you line them all back up right. And 
and just take and use that line to line it up and drill your pocket holes. Pocket holes seem to be the best method because you can still use a clamp a little bit to help hold it together. I believe I did, but this will make assembly go faster because you don't have to wait on the glue to dry before you can continue on. But pocket holes are, are great for a lot of a lot of different things. But be sure again to put the pocket holes on the back side, on the part on the side that you don't like, or you on not on the non prettiest side. Again, just line the holes back up from the lines back up, and it's ready to go. Uh oh, what happened? Look at this. I had them mixed up. So make sure you put them in the correct order i still can't figure out how i got them out of order but i did then go ahead and get them set and i did one or two at a time throughout this whole process i put the glue on and then i would line up the lines and i would screw in the pocket holes and all it takes is a little bit of pressure not a lot just a little bit of pressure because this cedar pickets it's you know it's pretty soft and as you see i Put them on back and back out and put it just a little bit a little bit less tension on it because it was making them st pull up and out of alignment and so just a little bit of pressure is all you need and you can come back if you can clamp it or put rubber bands on it or however you want to do it you know i've seen people even taking and, and tape all this together put tape on the bottom and you know facing up you lay them on top and then you bring the tape around and pull the tape tight and that keeps it. So there's a lot of different methods of clamping if you don't have clamps. But with this pocket hole, you don't really really even have to you don't really have to clamp if you don't want to, because it gets it enough to get it going. On each one I would take and clean up my glue just so it didn't get all over the face of it as I was putting it together, as I moved it around. You can put it all on there if you want because you can come come back and sand it off if you want, but you can put it all together without flipping it over. But I wanted to go ahead and clean it up as I went. And I had to clean it back up again after I come back here and put some clamps on that squeezes a little bit tighter. But those pocket holes made it so much easier to work with if you want to go that route. So I clamp it up and it's ready to go. Okay, if you want to apply a finish and if you want to leave it rustic, just leave it the way it is. If you want to apply a finish, apply a finish. I did on both of the ones I did. And the one is, uh, this one here with the blue is very rough cut. You know, it's, it's not sanded at all. On the other one, it is... And I used a um, sponge brush here. I wouldn't recommend it. I'd use a paint brush because that rough cut tore it up, tore those brushes up, and and uh, and I like to use my even the even the cheap brushes. I like to use them more than once, if possible. But it got the job done. You know, you can dab it in where it needs to be dabbed in. Is good or better with a with a sponge brush than you can with a paintbrush but these are both I put on there are sealers I mean they're stains they're solid stains and uh, I don't use I don't like to use paint as much as I like to use stain if I want to paint it solid I'll just use a solid stain and but I didn't take a lot of time to get it completely coated because again this is a rustic wooden cross here's the back side of the second one with the pocket hose as you see i used a paintbrush on this one and of course it sped way up but as you can see it goes on better faster and i can dab it in there just as good either way this is the smooth side that i have planed down and 
all I did was run it through the planer until it got the roughness off of it and hit it with the um, random orbital sander, sander briefly, not much because it was pretty smooth as it is. It doesn't have to be perfect because it is rustic. And I went around all the corners inside the cross and got it completely covered. And whenever this is done, it's time to distress it because I didn't want it. I didn't like the final look of the way it was right here. I wanted some more distressing than what just the rustic cedar picket provided. So as I finished up here, I let it dry. And the good thing is about stains in this rough cut, it doesn't take long to dry at all. This is when I started distressing. That's your next step. I sanded down the blue one. I didn't go down as and expose the wood as much as what I did on the white. I didn't do it a lot on either one. But I did do it around the outsides of the cross or the outer edges of the cross or outer edges of the of the wood, you know, planks. So I got this pretty much done the way I liked it. It just yeah, I hit a few spots. I didn't hit it all. I didn't bring it down where a lot of the wood was showing. But I did make a sort of a glow around the around the cross cutout. Now on the on this one, I did go pretty pretty much pretty heavier. You know, I exposed a lot more of the wood because I just thought the white looked good like that since it was smooth and I did go ahead and do the back mainly because it was really rough I'm just really really rough because it was unfinished and it was a, a big drastic change to the front layer smooth so I, I went ahead and sand this down it's actually as I felt it there it's pretty smooth now I added some polyacrylic and that sort of, you know, brought out the colors a little bit more and gave it a little bit of a protective uh, coating on there, mainly for dust and stuff in people's homes. You know, you don't, it's real hard to dust that, that um, rough cut. And when I put that stain on, or that sealer on there, that polyacrylic on there, it made it a lot smoother where the dust isn't going to get down any in any crevices and and be you know a pain to clean so i finished that one up and decided or got ready for the white one i did a light sanding on it also flipped it over and got started with my sealer I put the same polyacrylic sealer on there, just one coat, but I put it pretty liberally. It, I filled it up, filled the brush up and hit it pretty hard, you know, coated it pretty well, then smoothed it out at the end as I needed. But it was a very simple build, even though I had to design it and get it going. And so everybody can do it. It's something everybody can do, and it's something that will last forever. So, that's it. Here's the products. Here's the pictures of it. And I will, the next video we show that comes out will be us listing them for sale, pricing, and all the business side of it. So, hope this helps. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. That's what I'm here for. Please like, follow, subscribe, hit that bell.